Let's call it. We good. Be cool, dude. Be cool with this one, okay? She was on Ellen. <laughs> you gotta be professional. We're, we're coming up after Ellen for this one. <laughs> be cool. Try not to freak out. I don't know if we're as cool as Ellen. Ellen's pretty fucking cool. Uh, uh, um. Okay, so, just setting this all up. We all rocking and rolling ready? We're good to go. Yeah. Okay, how you doing there, Marissa? I'm good, how are you guys? Pretty good, pretty good. So we'll okay. probably probably take it from the top. If we're going to do a quick little uh, intro on Marissa Inda, most people probably already know who you are and what you've done, but a little bit about your powerlifting resume. Definitely. Um, should I just start? <laughs> so, wh wherever you want to take it, yeah. What's the, All right. what's the biggest? The biggest? Um, I don't know, you know. I, honestly, like, I'm really bad about remembering my numbers. Usually Chad just remembers them for me. Yeah. But uh, uh, my best squat is 319 pounds. Um, my best bench is 198 pounds. And my best deadlift is 402 at 52 kilos. And you got you an IPF world record for the deadlift? Yeah, I did, but it got taken away, so I'll, I'll be getting that back in March. <laughs> oh, 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 nice! I love it when someone comes in guns blazing, firing shots, <laughs> temporarily just loaned it out to somebody. Yeah, nice. that, that's like my thing about this sport, and even actually all the girls in the 52 kilo class, like I, I think it's one of the most competitive classes out there, and we just all really push each other. You have, you know, Susie Hartway, who's an amazing squatter, yeah. um, Liz Craven out of Australia, who now has the number one world record total, as well as the squat and the deadlift, and yeah. then Joy from Great Britain, who has the open world record deadlift, so... It's a pretty, it's a pretty stacked class, and of course, Sophia Loft, who's won like the last three years in a row. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, last but not least, Sophia too, who's a beast. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy competitive. So, how did you start um, getting into powerlifting? We're gonna roll it right back because you started doing, was it is it women's physique? Yeah, actually, I started lifting when I was seventeen years old. I'm forty years old now, and um, I started like most people, you know, just wandered into a gym and. Like most people, I think you go into a gym to look better, to look a certain way. Yeah. I was a gymnast. I was looking for something to do. And, um, yeah, I actually just started lifting weights. I saw a girl. Her physique was pretty off the hook. And, you know, <laughs> I'm, so this was this was before the Internet. This was before, you know, you could get an Instagram and, you know, follow people and find yeah. out what they were doing. But I just followed her around the gym. And I'm just, sure she thought I was like I was the ultimate creeper. I was sure to do an exercise <laughs> and I would go and do it. At and least you weren't like at least you were like threatening like a two hundred and thirty pound dude who was like, All right, man, <laughs> watch from afar, you're freaking me out. So was she squatting and benching and everything too, or Um, yeah, you know, she was doing everything. She was one of the first uh females that I ever saw that had muscle that looked really feminine and yeah I just started following her around and just doing as soon as she would leave something I would go and do it and I'm sure she was just like, oh, so, like so you, didn't, you didn't talk to her you just like literally when she's done you were in yeah of course I didn't talk to her I just I was just <laughs> And it's funny enough, from there, uh, one of the guys at the gym approached me, and he's just like, he's like, look, he's like, you're young, you have a good physique, you should just, you know, you should just jump into, like, a bodybuilding meet. This, this was work in bikini. And um, I, I, I was lucky enough to train with guys who did squat, bench, and deadlift, and, um, yeah, I just started jumping into bodybuilding. And I kind of got out of that probably when I was, like, 21, Um just didn't like the direction it was going. The girls were getting bigger and bigger and bigger, yeah. and I didn't want to do what it would take to win. And yeah, um, I'm stopped competing. Still trained though. Yeah. And um, after I had my kids, I just decided I wanted to be competitive again. Didn't want to do the bodybuilding thing. Jumped into a physique show and thought, "Holy shit, I hate dieting." Thing. <laughs> and saw a soft flyer for a powerlifting meet. Thought, "Fuck, I've always been strong," so I just jumped in it. I knew nothing about it. It, so do you count macros or do anything like that for powerlifting and getting your weight? Because you're always around your weight class, right? 
Yeah, I'm always I'm always under my weight class. I actually try to eat up to the 114s. But no, I think yeah. all of my years of like competing in bodybuilding and you know being poor and having to watch <laughs> what I ate, not having a bunch of snacks in the house, it's always just kept me relative lean. Um, as I can tell everybody, I think it's just consistency with everything. Consistency with training. Consistency with eating. Um, I've able I've been able just to maintain this and actually fill out my weight class. I think that's a big mistake a lot of girls make when they get into powerlifting is they try to cut weight and it's like if you're five four you shouldn't be competing in you know the ninety seven pound class yeah, yeah, like yeah. fill out your frame put on more muscle and you're going to be stronger and of course it takes time which is what nobody wants to hear. We it takes just a lot yeah we, we were just talking about that almost everybody we talk to it's like it, it you, if you get in here thinking that you're going to hit the same as like a Marissa in the within your first year it's not going to happen. Yeah, a lot of people, they don't want to hear that it's it's the end game. It takes a long time to get up to this level. I mean, and everybody and their mother, it's like lose uh, in 60 days, lose X amount of weight in 60 days, gain this kind of strength. It's not the way it works in powerlifting, or very, very rarely. Yeah, there are some outliers. I mean, obviously there's freaks in every type of sport, but at the end of the day, it, you have to put your time in. Put yeah. your damn time in. So how long have you been um, powerlifting specifically? Competitive. Um, I've been competing in powerlifting um, for five and a half, half years, going on six years. And like I said, the, for my first meet, I knew nothing about it. I mean, I didn't even know I had to pause the bench. So um, I just went into it, jumped in, and had a great time. Yeah, I fell in love with it. How did you get into powerlifting? So how did that transition occur? Um, you know what? I had still been training bodybuilding style. Um, of course, I I always. I've always squatted, benched, and deadlift. Again, I was very fortunate to train with people back in the day who, who all we did was free weights. And So right now you're with Juggernaut. Is it a, so Chad is doing your, your coaching and programming right now? Yeah, he's been doing my programming since my first world. So um, I, I, I made it all the way to worlds on my own. Um, that was in South Africa many weeks three years ago it's, and right after that meet I started uh, doing uh, programming with him so you did all that yourself all the way so up to the it, world it was nice yeah. uh huh wow so, so I, I, that's crazy yeah it's kind of when people are like it's like well you need to coach you need to sit. So, I mean if you if you have half a brain you can just you know read figure it out um when I first started, I did a linear periodization based on like an RPE scale, and kind of just I've always kind of just went off a of fill. Um, if I'm to fill those like shit and, and it's hurting, aside from you know, you know, muscles getting pumped, of course you stop. Um, yeah. But yeah, I kind of just went on fill. But I mean, it, it was definitely very helpful to get outside eyes doing the programming um, because they find holes. They help with you know, your form issues, um, little things like that, just program tweaking. Um, I never peaked properly for meets, so yeah, that's yeah. definitely one thing that's helped me a lot working with that. that. Uh, a big thing with, like, a coach so, I find yeah. um, is that, like, you know, you get emotionally attached to certain numbers, and when you're chasing them, sometimes a coach can pull back on the reins and be like, whoa, you're going a little heavy. But, you know, when you're in there, like, if you're coaching someone else, you have those eyes. When it's yourself sometimes, you're like, I got this, don't worry. Those RPEs, you finish a set and you're like, that was RP8. It's like, man, that looked like RP10. You know, like, if you're not, if you don't have the coach who could reel you back, you know? Well, also, too, or if you're just like me, and I'm like, fuck, that was RP10, it was really seven. Oh, really? <laughs> I was really <laughs> shit, so, like, <laughs> I put them in album. I, I, you know, I don't. I think I don't get injured and stuff as much as some people because I'm just like, eh, I'll, I'll max out on the platform. I don't need to max out for Instagram. This is true, and that's one of the biggest is uh, a lot of people. You feel, especially with the type of uh, like following that you have, sometimes you feel a little bit of pressure to put some big numbers up. But Instagram isn't uh, really where the competition and titles are made, right? Yeah, yeah, and I really I follow the program. I mean, I've. Chad's had photo shoots where he's had photographers there and filming everybody lifting heavy, and if it, was, if it always happens to be on like a deload week, I'm like, yeah. he's like, well, if you want, like, no, program says 135, I'm doing 135. <laughs> Whoa, that's hardcore on the program. I, Does it yeah, I'm, I'm too old to be getting hurt. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> no kidding. So was it basically uh, maintaining on your program that would keep your longevity, you think? Is staying within your RP? Huh. Oh, yeah, for sure. And like I said, just listening to your body. I mean, even sometimes if it's programmed, if something is hurting, and, and you have to know yourself well enough to know if you're just being a pussy or if there's actual, <laughs> like, that's not muscle related. And, you know, um, I remember I had I a few months back and I was moving furniture up and down stairs and I had like a really heavy squat day and I unwrapped the bar and the bar was like up my back. It's like seizing on me. And I had to eat like five weeks later. And so I just wrapped it and, and I was just like, I'm not caught it today. You know, shit's hurting. And yeah, I could probably suffer through it, but it was a different kind of pain. Like I said, it, you've been injured before, you know, like, okay, this is hurting. You know, I'm backing off one day and just pushing it the next day is just not going to kill your games, you know? Often, it, yeah, because in the end of the day, it's it's the consistency that you've been putting in it. For 10 weeks, you've been killing it. Yeah. One day off is okay. You'll be okay. It's when some exactly. people are like, oh, my God, it's that one day off. I don't know if I'm going to be able to hit it on the platform. So if you could exactly. give a bit of advice to a novice, what do you think the biggest thing that novices get wrong when they're entering the game? Um, I think they just try to focus on the big three. So they just do squat, bench, and deadlift. They forget about doing accessory stuff, doing crazy amounts of volume, hitting PRs every other week. And you know, when you're new to, to lifting in general, you're gonna you're gonna make gains very quickly. So it can be really excited to go in the gym and oh, I hit 135 on a squat this week. Next week, I'm gonna hit 165. Then I'm gonna hit 185. And they just yeah. constantly want to make these PRs. And then things start hurting. They start getting knee tendonitis, and you know, elbows start hurting. And it's just like you know what? slow down, you know, build some work capacity, yeah. you know, refine your technique and build some muscle because muscle moves weight, you know? So yeah, I think that's yeah. typically the biggest mistake you can make. And do you think your background in terms of bodybuilding and building that muscle is really what gave you that launching pad and platform to enter into powerlifting, sorry? Oh, for sure. I think um, it's helped tremendously. I think that's why um, my first meet I've been in, I could pull almost three times body weight, and from there, just make big incremental jumps. I mean, having a really strong back helps in all of your lifts. Um, and also, like I said, I, I was, even at that time, I was already, like, the most muscular in my weight class. I mean, so much so that it's like, I didn't even, I don't even think I won that meet, and I was getting drug tested. So it's just like... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I think there's some benefit to to doing those accessory things because, like I said, there's no weak links. You know, you, you yeah. work on everything to build muscle and have no weak links. On, you, on your accessories, do you do partials and stuff like board press and stuff like that? Um, yeah. So typically, like on bench, I'll do my regular bench, and then I um, Chad's really big on like grip variations, so close grip, wide grips, photos. Um, I used to use slingshot a lot, but I'm a very bodybuilder type bencher. I, I bench more flared elbow and slingshot changes my bench form too much so yeah i'll use um reverse bands or to to a two board bench blocks mm -hmm. and do you still train a lot of those bodybuilding things like biceps calves things like that or yeah, let's go. I mean, even today after i did my high bar squats my front front squats i did bulgarian split squats i do leg press a lot um typically too especially with women we tend to lose fitness much quicker than men we're able to handle more volume than men so if i were to just squat and then not squat again until Wednesday, I, 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 I would lose too much. So I, I keep all of that stuff in. I mean, I'm doing accessories sometimes um, three days out from meat still. Oh, wow. Like nice stuff, maybe like one thing, leg curls, you know? Yeah, yeah, but just stay active and keep yeah. going. Yeah. So what are some of your future goals? Looking into 2017, um, you're probably, have you, you've made already onto the world championship team? Yeah, so... Um, that will be in Belarus in June, um, but prior to that, I'll be doing the Arnold in March. So, oh, you will. Um, goal there. If I have a perfect day, I, I want to hit a 330 squat, uh, 204 pound bench, and a 413 dead. So, that would be a perfect day, and that would also give me the world record total and my world record deadlift back. So. Wow, there's no <laughs> kidding. So, then, yeah, we need if you took that world record, like how close is it in terms of all, like, because there's four of you guys that are pretty much neck and neck leading into the worlds, right? 
Uh, yeah, it's really close. I mean, um, really what held me back the longest time was my squats. Um, my bench and my dad have always been good, but my squat, I was always, you know, way behind the other girls. So I would have to really make it up on bench and deadlift, but now that I've kind of learned how to squat after 20 years, um, <laughs> I, I, hopefully like, you know, those numbers shouldn't be a problem as long as, you know, you hold it together in competition, hit depth and, you know. Yeah. yeah. And do you have a game yeah. plan in terms of, um, cause some people like to open really high and then, and do smaller jumps once they get on the board. Does do you and Chad kind of go over your game plan? Do you like to even look at what other girls are doing? Or are you kind of like, well, I don't care. I don't look at what anybody else is doing because if, if I'm only capable of squatting 330 pounds, if Liz is squatting 350, I'm not going to get 350. God so bless. it does me, yeah. does me no good to worry about what her squat is. I think what, where, where competitiveness comes in is on that last deadlift. So like if this person's a great squatter, but you know their deadlift is way beneath yours and yours is up here, then those two kilos or that chipping it might put you over the top. So then you do have to be aware of what the other person is doing. And as far as like some, I, and, I, and I coach a lot of clients and they'll be on the internet looking at all their competition. Well, she did this, she didn't like, you know what, stop focusing on them and focus on what you can do because you're only going to do what you're capable of on that day. Yeah. Now, to the last pool, then you can start going, okay, we need to start finagling some numbers here. Fuck it, I got to just make a Hail Mary pool, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and, that's, and that's one of the biggest advantages a big deadlifter has. When everybody yeah. is done speaking and done their, like, their squat, they got a big dead, they got a, or sorry, a big bench, a big squat. When you got that big dead, you got the final say. You take yeah, a look and be like, how much do I need? Load it up. Exactly. And then you can just say, fuck it, I'm just going to go for it. And if my back decides to shoot out my ass, then I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had any of those situations? Like, what is probably your biggest moment you've had in powerlifting? And you probably had as a big deadlifter one of those moments, like a Rocky style moment where you're losing all day. And with the very last deadlift, you pull it out of the flames. And it was like, actually, oh, my God. <laughs> actually, at the Arnold last year, um, we had a booth there. So I competed on um, Saturday. So we flew in Wednesday, set up the booth for Thursday. I worked the booth all day Friday and then competed Saturday. So I was fucking trash. <laughs> <laughs> I. I get in for weigh-ins, and you know, USAPL does same-day weigh-ins, so it was so crowded there, I almost missed weigh-ins, so I'm running, and if you've ever been to the Arnold, you know it's just, just super packed, yeah. I was like football smashing people, <laughs> like trying, trying to make weigh-ins, so it was super stressful, my back was tight from standing and, and, and setting up a booth for two days, and um, I got called on depth on my first spot. I think I got on, I, and I made my second, missed my third, so I only got my, my second squat. Oh, um, shit. Only got my sec, my opener bench. Oh, because shit. I got, yeah, stuck. So, like, in my last pool, I'm, I, I was just like, Chad's like, well, what do you want to do? And at this point, the open world record deadlift hadn't been set yet, and I'm like, you know what? This means already fucked. I don't even care. <laughs> but we put 385 pounds on I'm going to pull the world record right now. And he's just like, okay, let's do it, and I pulled it. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, it was ugly as shit, but it came out so <laughs> Now, is that the one uh, that you're saying, like, lasted? How long did that record last? Because it's really tight in terms of the deads, right? Yeah. Okay, so I, I was the first one to set the standard. So in I, if IPF, they don't even count world records until it meets what they yeah. consider a world record stand. So I set it at the Arnold, and I think, like, five days later, Joy Namani from Great Britain broke it. Yeah. And, um, and, and yeah. And, and she still has the open world record. Mine still counted as the, the master's record, the old lady record, as I like to call it. <laughs> and, um, yeah, and then that, I actually, I have the unofficial one, which is 402 pounds at nationals, but Liz Craven um, broke it at her last, the Oceanos, and she pulled 392, I believe. Oh, so, okay. um, because that was an IPF meet, that's, that's what counts, but... Uh, it's okay. I'll pull 413 in March, so. <laughs> We're going to rectify this situation real quick, right? For Chad, couldn't Chad give you like half a day off or a day off or something? Would you be like, hey, man. Right. <laughs> I know. He wrote that after. He's like, man, I'm really sorry. You know, I was like, it's okay. But it's hard. The Arnold is so packed. It's like, you just need all the people you can have there. It's just, yeah. it's crazy. You know, Chad. I, have, I hate that place. You know, Chad was probably thinking when you're loading for that IPF for the world record, he's like, God, I hope she gets this. She's not going to let me lift this down if she doesn't. 
Yeah. It's funny because um, he was actually going to put something else on the bar, and, and I, I was just like, you know what? I don't even care at this point. It's already shit meat. Just fuck it. <laughs> already fuck it, Chad. Load it up. So with everything you've done, uh, what's the craziest story like that you have a takeaway from powerlifting? I'm kind of loading this question, but you were on Ellen. Okay, let's just cut right yeah. to it. How the hell did this happen? You're like, on oh, Ellen. I, I actually, um, I I had actually competed in like a calisthenics meet. It's called Battle. And um, I actually just uploaded a stupid video uh, for Frank Madrano, who's like very huge in the calisthenics world. And um, yeah, it just blew up. It, it went viral with a, a day. I didn't even know. Chad's the one who's like, he's like, dude, you realize that your video has like a million views already? <laughs> <laughs> and I came like, and so that was like, day I get a call and there's this chick's like I'm from Ellen DeGeneres and I just hung up I'm like yeah whatever so like who the fuck is going to call me from Ellen DeGeneres and then she called back she's like yeah I'm being serious and it just happened that quick she's like we want you on the show can we come down there on Thursday they actually drove to the gym picked up the Smith machine that I did the pull-ups on drove it to Burbank and it all happened just that way that's all I nerve wracking because when I did that pull up routine, I do it with my headphones in and I, and I try to stay and think to the music. Yeah. So right before we go on, I'm like, I don't know what we're going to get copyright to. So kind of just have all the songs in your head. I'm just like, what? So I don't even know what the hell I'm doing at that point. But yeah, I mean, it was definitely crazy. And it was nice that when I got out there, I'm like, oh, cool. It's the same song that was on the video. That routine's already kind of like etched in my head. I haven't yeah. making anything else. So yeah, 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 it was. But the thing that really sucked about it is they were very adamant about me not talking about powerlifting. What? Yeah. What did you think that is? The interviews, they don't even bring it up because, because their general audience is female. They didn't want it to look like I lifted weights. That I, I was just this mom that knew how to do pull-ups. And I was like, yeah, no. And that's why they made me wear a long sleeve and they made me cover up my arms. No shit. You were too jacked for Ellen. Yeah. They, it, yeah. Wow! I thought that would have been a plus, though. It breaks down barriers and stereotypes. Yeah, you think so, but they, they wanted it to come across like anybody could jump on a bar and do this. I'm like, yeah, no, they can't. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Takes a long time. <laughs> yeah, no shit. Wow. So did Ellen live up to all the hype that you had expected when you met her? Um, I was actually a little bit disappointed. She's very nice, don't get me wrong. But as soon as like they we aired, she just walked off stage. She's like, like, you know, there's that. no interaction. They make you sign the real tape, and then they put you in a car and take you home. And that was that, like, right? You don't get... Yeah, that was that. But, but you know what? A lot like, of people... What else would I be on? Yeah, like, a lot of... How many people saw that show? How many people watch Ellen? That's, like, the biggest show yeah. in the U.S. right now and in Canada, wherever, right? Like, millions and yeah. millions of people, and obviously. Because with no places, they're like, oh, you're the pull-up pull girl from Ellen. I'm just... <laughs> Wait, too. You're like, you're like, what? Fuck you! I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm more than that. I'm a champion powerlifter. Right? No shit. Okay. So if you think if you're if you're gonna be remembered, if you're gonna look back at your powerlifting career and be remembered as anything, what would you like to be remembered as? I'm just question. like a consistent humble lifter, you know. A consistent humble winner? Did you say? Lifter. Lifter? Well, no. <laughs> well, that would be very humble. <laughs> <laughs> you consistently humbly the best. I think, I, I, <laughs> you know, <laughs> TV star. Yeah, just, no. Yeah, uh, humbly just being like the consistent lifter that's, you know, always there to help people. And, you know, at the end of the day, we just lift weights. It's nothing spectacular. I'm always kind of taken aback when people are so excited to meet you. I'm just like, Oh, we just lift weights. We're not, you know, it's just, there's no reason to feel better than anybody else because it's, I don't know. I, I feel like we're not, I'm not really doing anything important. I'm just lifting weights. Is it, it is kind of crazy how social media, like you have, how many followers you have? You have close to a hundred thousand? Um, I have about 101. Whoa! Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're like, yeah, like six months ago, maybe. Oh, I took a lot of booty, booty shots and, and creative angles to get to 101. <laughs> there you go. So, I mean, it's crazy the following that powerlifting has. I mean, like you were saying earlier, Alec, when you first started this journey, there was no, like, social media. Social media for powerlifting was yeah. mostly Instagram blew this up. It feels like. After Instagram came around. Yeah. It's like almost 
powerlifters are like minor celebrities, man. I heard that, that's, a, that's a lot of people to watch what you're doing on a regular basis. Yes. It's really bizarre. It Isn't really it? is. Isn't it though? Maybe I'm just coming from like an old perspective for, I mean, I didn't even have a cell phone until I was like 20-something. Same uh, here, same here. Yeah, it's definitely was, a very... I didn't have a cell phone, I swear to God, until like freaking I was like 28, man. I mean, <laughs> Thank God. Imagine the nudes that would be out. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding, it's probably best that we were like seventeen right? with cell phones. Yeah, we got away with murder. Here what were you going to say, Randy? I was going to say how much time was wasted in your twenties if you had had a cell phone compared to now. We got a lot more done. Yeah, and we got away with a whole lot more. Yeah. If you if yes. you could if you could change something with powerlifting and the sport in general, what do you think it would be? Um, I think just more unity amongst all the federations. I honestly just don't get why everyone fights this and fights that. It's like, if you don't want to compete there, don't compete there. It doesn't make anything better than or worse than this one. Um, yeah. I honestly just stayed in IPF and USAPL because the USAPL is the first meet I jumped into. I didn't research fed anything like that. And now I, I obviously stay in it because it's, you know, it is worlds and you do get to compete against the best but yeah. i don't look down on anybody who competes in the uspa or the spf i could care i mean it's the end of the day it's not an olympic sport we just lift weights none of us are getting paid yeah uh, you know so i just like to go in and have fun and just be inspired by other lifters who are just equally as strong because when you see another person in your weight class that is strong as fuck regardless of federation <laughs> regardless if they're doing drugs i'm sorry it's just inspiring me like yeah it, a 52 kilo girl that can 60 holy shit that's amazing so yeah i guess just more unity amongst the lifters and amongst the federations it's funny you had you had mentioned usapa and then that none of us are getting paid but you see that one the awards for uh the u.s open that they're holding forty thousand dollars yeah holy shit like that's got a lot of people excited yeah, so it, that's definitely going to be interesting. Um, we've already seen some crossovers. Yeah. I think um, Hack is going to do it. Hack's going to uh, do it. Den Dennis Cornelius. Um, I actually got invited to that meet, and um, I told Gracie, you know, the only reason I won't do it is because I, I've never won a world championship, and I kind of feel like, you know, there's a lot, there's three or four of us that are neck and neck, and, you know, this might be my one opportunity to say I had it one, one time. So, you know, I feel like I kind of owe it to myself to, you know, just stick I'm, stick with what I'm doing and try to see if I can bring yeah. the whole world championship. Yeah. And then if you nail that goal down and that 40 K is on the table next year. Right. Think about it. You, <laughs> yeah. you think of, it's hard. Like who's getting who would be tough if you actually thought you have a shot in there. The only thing is, of course, the U.S. Open, they, they don't have a, a tested division. Yeah. So then, so then yeah. it's, you you know, you got to make some tough decisions and it gets tough. Like, Hack, Hack's strong. He's strong as hell. But there's some dudes out there who, like, A, they use knee wraps on a consistent basis. And he's yeah. been having, it's tough to squat with knee wraps. It's not just like you throw the wraps on, boom, 50 pounds heavier in your squat. And yeah. then on top of that, if you're, if you're thinking, I want to stay IPF and still do that, and, you, and you're not going to take any gear like anybody else is, yeah. shit, man, you are... You're a little behind in that. Like it's tough. It'd be hard. Yeah, it's yeah. I th it's definitely the competition is going to be uh, pretty fierce there. It'll be interesting to see how the IPF people stack up because if you remember the very first raw unity, IPF lifters weren't, um, you know, for lack of a better word, castigated for, <laughs> for competing in <laughs> in that. And oddly enough, a lot of the IPF lifters won. Yeah. So I mean. Everybody likes to say, you know, drugs, this and drugs, that. And, you know, I'm, I'm always the person of the belief of, like, you know what? You, you still had to already be strong for those drugs to even work. I don't yeah. believe anyone just takes time or trying of that and magically is now the strongest person in the yeah, world. Yeah, that yeah. motherfucker was already strong to begin with. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For you know, sure. some people feel better and they're just genetically better at a certain sport. And that's yeah. just the fact. Yeah. Well, drugs or not, they're putting in their time. They gotta put in their time. They gotta put in their time. Here's the only the only thing would be yeah. if you took, let's say, oh, I'm using John Hack because uh, we just brought him up. If you took John Hack Natty and made John Hack face John Hack Unnatty, I'm gonna bet on John Hack Unnatty. So that, but that's oh, of that, course. But, yeah. but that's what I'm saying. 
there was already he was already oh he's already John right. Henry yeah yeah he's that already yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. puts you up. yeah you don't get people who are just genetically not predispositioned to be great at something throw in a drug cocktail and automatically you know they're amazing it's just you know I, I it's just like cyclists that got caught with drugs who was his name Lance Armstrong the one who had cancer Lance Armstrong. Um, Armstrong yeah yeah I, I could do everything Lance Armstrong was doing sorry I still would not win the because yeah, though, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it'll be interesting to see how yeah. the, the IPF people, even they fare in the competition and even uh, what ends up happening if they could come back. I'm not even sure about the rules there. If competing against people who are... No. Well, know, they'll, they'll be banned. They'll be suspended from any world competition for a year. So that, in effect, kind of puts him out for two years because you, you wouldn't make you wouldn't be able to do the qualifying meets to make it to world, I believe. Yeah. But I'm not one of those like rule book people, so <laughs> I, don't, I don't I don't even know. But I know they they cannot do worlds. So. But if you win forty thousand dollars, you might be all right with that, especially if you already won like John. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said. I don't I don't blame John Hap or Dennis Cornell. I won world championships so you know what go after the money at this point they've already proven you know all champions so yeah, you want to yeah. go now and make some money the thing about it is and this is why i always laugh when people are like oh everybody in the ipf uses i'm sure there are some i don't know but um on the flip side none of us get paid we have to pay our own way into meets we have to buy our warm-up gear for world pay for our own flights yeah there's really no incentive there you know yeah. what i mean it's just like Fuck is the incentive? Right? You know, <laughs> I have no no incentive. Yeah, it'd be I, like I just hope. So you see the U.S. Open getting uh, the U.S. APL or U.S. PA getting this kind of money for the U.S. Open, and it'd be nice to see because a lot of people are talking out the economics of the game haven't really shifted towards fifty k prizes. It looks like it's no. more of a, a financial backer who's willing to be like, look, I'm willing to part with quarter of a million dollars just because I love for the love of the game. Yeah. Frick, man, if the IPF could get some dough like that, like, guess no one's going to sit down for dinner with this cat and be like, hey, man, how much money you got to throw around? You know what I mean? Like, quarter of a million dollars. Shit. Uh -huh. Spread the love. Yeah, that's right. It's definitely a lot of money to throw around, especially when it's like, where's your ROI? Like, what would yeah. be your return of investment on that's that? Right. Because, but you know what? You think about how much bodybuilding brings in, and I'm sure... Back when um, the weeders started bodybuilding, I'm sure nobody thought, well, they would be making $250,000 prizes. Now, granted, yeah. it's just for the men, but still, that's a lot of money just to stand yeah. on stage in your chonies and flex. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Hell, yeah. What are you doing? Hell yeah. So, I mean, yeah, maybe it is a sign of things to come and yeah. some doors start opening. I hope the best. I mean, it's only, even though, like, um, like I'm, I'm not with that federation, but no matter what, all boats rise with the high with the, when the tides go up. So I mean, hopefully they do really, really, really well. And the guy, he's not going to yeah. make quarter of a million back, but hopefully whatever his goals are, he gets it. You know? Yeah. yeah. Definitely, they have, to, they have to. You know, I, I think what would get get interested is if you got to know the lifter. You know, I mean, I think what makes you know the other feds sometimes more popular is when you had the Brown and Lilies, the Chad Smith, the Milana Chef's lifting, they're big names, and like you, you, you know, you see them on social media, so you kind of feel vested, like, oh, I like this yeah. guy, I want him to win. Yeah, so yeah. I, I really think like you have to highlight the lifters and promote it in such a way, or like, holy shit, I want Hack to win, I want yeah. you know, over this guy, and you know, you have to kind of create some buzz. It's kind of like um, going into the IPF worlds, uh, like Hack versus Gibbs, like almost like the USC, how they've uh, made certain stars, like a yeah. Conor McGregor. And then when you had Hack Gibbs, and everyone's like, oh my god, Hack Gibbs, who do you have winning? All of a sudden, people are invested. And people want to watch this thing. Exactly. Yeah, and that's the same thing that's going to happen at when you Ray Williams go against, you know, Zeppa. Like, you know, these are two super heavyweights that are strong as shit. Like, who's going to, you know, Ray should have the squat world record, but at Nationals, this guy from Nauru got it. So, you yeah. know, it'll be really interesting to see how they hype that up. Yeah. What, what do you think, looking at 2016, looking back now that it's over, what do you think as a sport was the biggest um, that we've had in powerlifting? Any federation. What do you think is the biggest moment? Um, I would have to say Raw Nationals at the USAPL because A, that was like 
have the most entries out of any meet ever. I mean, they were running four or five, four or five platforms, over 1,500 lifters, and that's where you saw the first 1,000-pound squat. Yeah. I mean, this is an impressive piece. You need that magnitude because, you know, um, I run my first meet, uh, you know, this year, and it's just, we only had 120 lifters, and I was like, holy fuck, this is like, I do this anymore. It's, 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 and to run 1,500 lifters, that, that's, that's amazing. Holy shit. It's, 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 the U.S. Royal National is getting to the point, and you know what, we're, just A, we, we ask this question to everybody, and almost everybody says Ray, by the way, is that that thousand pound squat, but yeah, going back to what you're saying about how big the U.S. Royal National is getting, it's freaking, how many meat directors could even take this on? It's getting to the point where, like, you, this is like a full-time staff, you need to have a huge budget, like, not just anybody can even rock and roll with something that size, it's huge. Yeah, but they definitely have a huge budget, but when your entry fees are 150 times up, that's true. 1500 meant shit ton of money, too. That's true, you know, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not yeah. like, you know, people are broke. I mean, and a lot of times, too, people volunteer. Just look at the Tough Mudder, how big Tough Mudder is, and half the people that work it are fucking volunteers. Yeah, that's so true. So I, I do believe look, there's definitely revenue there. Um, it's not like, you know, no one's, no one's running a meat in a deficit, trust me. Really? Except for maybe the U.S. Open. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That motherfucker's not getting his money back. You are not making a quarter of a million back, that's for sure. So do you, do you think, uh, like, in terms of the U.S. Raw Nationals, it's it's probably, how big was that viewership? Do you know? Because it's getting so big, do you think it might end up on television at some point? Yeah, you know, it's hard to say because, let's just face reality, powerlifting is not the most exciting sport to watch. Like, it's exciting when you see, like, the crazy lifts, like the Ray Williams lift, the thousand pounds, like thousand pounds is just is crazy to people. But I don't know, like if the average viewer would want to watch. Oh, this is the fifty-two kilo lifting three hundred yeah, pounds. Like, yeah, I just yeah. don't think it has the same thought factor, you know. Yeah. Um, I think again, it it would really just depend on how you would highlight the lifter and get people vested in, in rooting for that, and and again editing it in such a way that it's interesting. It doesn't take 10 hours to watch. So, I mean, yeah. well, I, I think anything's possible. I mean, let's face it, bodybuilding used to be on ESPN. So, yeah, that's... I don't know. more boring than that. <laughs> Powerlifting could go in the, in, in the same as like uh, NASCAR is that people look more for the crash than they do to watch the win, right? So people are starting or looking for the, the big fuck ups in it before they're which, looking for the big lifts. Which go viral. Or it could be like maybe the US Open where it's like, look, we got to trim the fat. We can't have like US Raw Nationals where it's like over a thousand people. It's just nothing but the stars going for $40,000 yeah. and it's going to be a quick, tight, Fast meat. Well, you're going to see big-ass lifts then, because people are going to be on TV and they know it. They're going to yeah, go yeah. for shit they can't do. And it's 40K. Yeah. You're not holding back for yeah. 40K. You, yeah. If it's to squat X amount, and that's that's one thing I want to watch is the guy who goes in there, 40K on the table, everybody's going to be pushing a little too far. Like, in terms of, hand, I wouldn't even want to handle somebody with 40K on the line. I'd be like, fuck that, choose your own attempts. Because <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. I don't want that kind of pressure on myself. The dude's like, dude. Uh, that's that it's yeah. definitely going to be stressful. I really think that it's going to really bring out the best in people because it's a lot of money on the line. Hell yeah. At, 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 at the Arnold, I think first place wins like $1,000, and I'm just like, fuck, I want that. Right. Yeah, right. $1,000. <laughs> yeah. And here's another thing, too. Um, in terms of, like, coaching athletes, if, if somebody, if your athlete wins 40 k is it? Is there like you know, in like boxing, where you get like, okay, if I'm coaching, I get ten percent of your press. If we can start getting to that situation, if somebody's winning forty k on your program, and he's like, okay, thanks, man, here's two hundred dollars. <laughs> you know what I mean? You'll be like, shit, two hundred dollars. You're not giving me a bonus at all. I walked you with the forty k. <laughs> Things could yeah. change. Some Chad might want to think about if he's got any. But does Chad have anyone going into U.S. Open? He's doing the U.S. Open. Oh, shit, is he? Wow, okay. Well, good luck. Does he have anyone else? Oh, wait, Brand um, Brandon Allen. Yeah, Brandon Allen, I think, is doing it, too, so, yeah. Because I think we asked Brandon, we're like, dude, if you and Chad That's are both going for 40K and he's doing your programming, aren't you a little suspect? <laughs> yeah, he did programming, so I, I thought that was pretty funny. I was like, how does that work out? Oh, like, oh, we're going to pay for you four weeks out. <laughs> That's right, man. 
That's like, Brendan's like, this is fucking weird, man. I'm doing, I'm doing biceps two weeks out and shit. Cam raises. I got cam raises. Cam raises for volume. I don't know. And who would, uh, do you know who actually, oh, I, who handles Brendan? Does his girlfriend, I think? Yeah, Brendan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And he handles him, yeah. Because then I was like, dude, for sure Chad cannot handle you. That's when you draw the line and be like, all right, man. Yeah, but no, I think Jenny, Jenny does it, so. Or Chad's like, I think I'm going to get Marissa to handle you if you're cool with that. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I think it's just best for everybody. Not for food the again. Worst bench lift off ever. <laughs> That's right, a fucking bench lift off. <laughs> you're writing down the attempts. It's like a thousand pound bench. That can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> you like you got it in you today. No, yep. it, but with with competitions like that too, the the handlers are going to have an important job. Like some of these handlers, are, like I think well, it's going to be like a caddy for golf. In terms of if, if they keep paying out, like, are you going to handle with Chad? Actually, that's a good. Um, no, you know what? He's always done his own. Um, oh, yeah. I wouldn't want to. <laughs> not for forty k, and that's what we were going to say. Is like for forty k, holy shit! I'm not picking your attempts. Like, you have to, I'd be like, what do you feel yeah. like? I want you to write it down yourself and sign your name, because $40,000. And I think those guys that have been competing a while, like, specifically, like, he's he's always doing his own attempts. Like, he's like, he does his own training. He's like, I know exactly how I'm feeling. Like, I would not let anybody take my attempts for me. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if you're going to run the block, the only time is if, uh, and this wouldn't be a deal with Chad, but if you had a bad weight cut and you're like, fuck, man, I don't know. That's the only time I get kind of iffy about attempts. But you don't got to worry about yeah, that. That's, that's, that's the beauty of the super heavyweight life. <laughs> that's it, man. Yeah, you, you, you're, whatever you hit in the gym, you're going to hit on that day. That's what Brandon was saying, too. Exactly. Yeah, yeah I mean, I think it's helpful, like, in, like, at Raw Nationals and stuff to have somebody go in and going, okay, you know, your head and... You know, all you need to do is get this much to win. So this is what we're doing versus trying to PR and you could potentially lose. So, you know, it is helpful to have somebody, I think, sometimes, you know, hey, no, we just need to win. So this is what you're going to put on. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To keep an eye on because the last thing you want to do if you're the lifter yeah. is be watching what other people are doing and let that shit get in your head and try to do math. Yeah. yeah. Or, like I said, if you're just really bad at pound and kilo conversions, raise the hand. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, you, know, you know what we noticed is um, when we interview a lot of Americans and we ask their totals and shit, they give it in pounds and we're like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> I don't know, that sounds good. Some of the super heavyweights like in the 2000s, some odd, I'm like, holy shit. We just yeah. know the kilos. The freedom units. The freedom <laughs> units, that's right. <laughs> Nicely said. Nice. The freedom units. You got any, is there any questions I'm forgetting? Oh, do you have any um, like what, disappointments? in terms of looking back, that you wish you could have redos in terms of the sport? Um, no, I think everything's always a learning lesson. I mean, honestly, like, I think if I, looking back, I wish I wouldn't have, like, one time my daughter was really flexible and she put her leg, like, right up here, and I'm just like, I can do that. And so, oh, I did that, and my whole, like, thigh was, like, <laughs> not going And so, of course, I'm just like, shit, I broke something. <laughs> not good. And, um... Yeah, so then I had a deadlift, and I'm like, let me try to deadlift on my broken leg, and then my back just said, Pfft. So, oh, yeah, I mean, shit. stupid shit like that, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back. I think my deadlift would be much further along if that had never happened, because I went from PRing at 356 to trying to work my way back up, you know, 335 at meets just because, of you know, I, I hurt myself, so. And if you had to be um, remembered, how would you like to be remembered in, in your powerlifting journey. And you know what? Now that I, now that I heard about the Ellen situation, fuck Ellen, man. No powerlifting? You know what? <laughs> fuck that. So what do you think? Because that was your biggest platform, but what do you, would you like to be remembered as? Oh, uh, just, like I said, just the person that was consistent and always just helpful. And, you know, I'm competitive, but I'm also, I'm also very happy when there's other people that come up behind you that push you to, to push you to be better, to push the envelope. It's no fun to fucking win if you're the only one that's good. It's fun to win when you beat that person that's right on your fucking tail. True. And yeah. you would like to win that world title before you, it's all said and done. Exactly. Like I said, at least once, even if I haven't for a week. <laughs> <laughs> no shit. Whatever it is, it is what it is, right? It's on that resume. You can say you were the best even if it is for a week. 
That's exactly. I have, I have no problem being Al Bundy. <laughs> <laughs> well said. Is there anything else you'd like to throw out there yourself? Um, no, you know, I just really appreciate, you know, you guys wanting to talk to me. It's always fun to uh, talk about lifting, talk about myself. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and just, you know, hopefully encourage more girls to just, you know, slap on some weight. Don't be afraid of the weight, you know? Yeah, and do you do, any, coach, it, do, you do any coaching yourself that um, we could plug? Yeah, I actually, I actually do, like, I call them a strong group, so I work anyway, it, um, because I have two kids of my own. And I think a lot of times after women have children, there's this, there's this thing that happens where you feel like, okay, I can't do selfish things anymore. Everything has to be about kids. And you kind of take a back seat and put your dreams and your competitive goals on hold, which, you know, of course you have to do, you know, when they're, when they're, when you have kids, but at the same time, that doesn't mean that you can't still pursue being healthy, being in shape, getting your body back. Um, so yeah, I, I have, um, my mom's strong groups and I work with women who have kids and, you know, just helping them, you know, hopefully just finding the joy of lifting weights, whether they compete or not, is just do something for yourself. 45 minutes out of your day is not going to ruin your child's life. So. No, as a matter of fact, it gives them something to look. Everybody wants yeah. that parent you look up to. That's your role model right there, right? Yeah, let's be honest. It prevents you from going fucking crazy. This is <laughs> true, too. It's cheaper than a, than a psychiatrist. It is. For sure. Okay, well said. Thank you very much for taking your time out. Um, you're a fucking amazing interview. Love to have you again. Good luck. Yeah, with, good luck with breaking that world record and bringing it back. And, uh, and yeah. good luck at the world championships as well. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank have you. a good one. Thanks. You too. Bye. Fuck, it's too bad that the video was cutting because she is a really good interview. She's a really good interview. The only problem we had with that is the fact is the movement it's the buffering right we've talked about that before is that it, that's gotta fix gonna, that buffering homie sorry guys well, well the biggest part is i think what it is is that she was a, way more active than i expected she was going to be like she's a she's a hand talker. energetic as shit the only thing we got to do and i think the biggest part about that is if people that are the hand talkers if we can just get them to tuck the table like underneath there because it's as soon as her hands moved is when yeah we, we said that though it, 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 as soon as her hands moved it was a glitch her talking you see it would level out again yeah 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 so but yeah, she was an amazing interview. I mean, she was she's fun, she's spirited. She's you know, funny as shit. Yeah, she says whatever she whatever comes to mind. That's awesome. No kidding. You know, no she was definitely back. not holding back. You know, we were saying before, in terms of the interviews, um, it feels like if you're in the IPF, you can hold back a little bit for some reason. Oh, she's typing something. So does she know this is on the record and recording right now? <laughs> so the the cool thing about it was too, is I, I, I think with her too is she's she's <laughs> that's what I was just going to say it was interesting with that is she's comfortable with herself like you know a lot of people hold back the reserved whatever else but she was herself which was fun that made it a lot more interesting oh shit I'm going to cut this one off